हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ संजय कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर पूर्णिमा कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग टुडे विल डिस्कस ऑन द बेसिक्स ऑफ द स्पर गियर लेट्स स्टार्ट सो द फर्स्ट इनिशियल थिंग इज व्हाट इज गियर गियर्स आर डिफाइंड एज द टू व्हील्स और द मल्टीलॉक्ड कैम्स व्हिच ट्रांसमिट पावर and motion from one shaft to another by means of successive engagement of the teeth and two and more gears if we attach with each other and we use it for the transmission are known as the gear train or the gear drives so how this uh, gears or the gear teeth get evolved let us understand from simple phenomenon if uh a wheels and b wheels rotate with each other because of friction first they will rotate after some time the, the friction reduces they will slip on each other that's why we are we have created the this teeth uh, teeth profiles so that they can uh, rotate with respect to each other so this is nothing but known as the tooth wheels or the gear teeth right so this is how the uh, gears has evolved now if we talk about the gear drives uh, in comparison with the belts ropes and pulley drives what are the advantages it transmit exact velocity ratio it may be used to transmit large power it may be used for the it may be used for the uh, small center dis uh, center distance of the shop it has a high efficiency reliable service and compact layout so disadvantages because uh, the errors in the cutting teeth may cause the vibrations noise during operations it requires suitable lubricant and reliable methods uh, for the proper operation of the gear drives so this is how we can compare the gear drives with the chain rope and pulley drive system now uh, the types of gear according to the there are four uh, in four uh, uh, there are four methods to classify the types of gears first one is according to the position of the axis of shaft uh, the first one is the parallel in parallel we have spur gear helical gear rack and pinion gear second one is the intersecting so examples are given bevel gear non intersecting and non parallel that is worm and worm gear Uh, according to the uh, peripheral velocity of the uh, gears the low velocity medium velocity and high velocity next one is the according to the type of gears external gears internal gears rack and pinion gear and the fourth one is the according to the position of the teeth on the gear surface straight inclined and curved this is how we classify and one of them is again uh, in the form of chart i have shown here you can see the important one is the spur gear mainly heavily used in the helical gear here you can use then uh, bevel gear which is and the worm and worm gear generally you will find in your daily life we are using spur gear helical gear bevel gear and worm gear now the selection of the type of gear so how we generally select the type of gear according to the application general layout of the shaft speed reduction power to be transmitted input speed and cost on which the gear selection is depends now if you talk about the spur gear here you can see generally the teeth are parallel to the axis of the shaft right and transmit power from one shaft to the another parallel shaft some examples are given here used in electrical screwdriver oscillating um, spring wind up alarm clock washing machines and hair dryers right here you can see a uh, slight uh, animation regarding the external gear and how the internal gear usually works helical gear you can see the helical gear the teeth on the helical gears are cut at an angle right cut at an angle to the face of the gear this gradually engagement makes the helical gears operate much smoothly and quietly than the spur gear 
Harrington gear is uh, again uh, if we talk about helical gears there are two types of single helical gear and double helical gear this is a type of helical gear only double helical gear because uh, we uh, everyone uh, have the knowledge that we get the axial thrust to avoid the axial thrust two helical gears of opposite hand can be mounted side by side to cancel the resulting thrust bodies so herring herring bond gears are mostly using heavy machineries this is the rack and pinion gears are used to convert rotation into the linear motion we uh, the main example you can see is steering system uh, on many cars bevel gear bevel gear is generally used to mount uh, the shaft that are 90 degree apart but can design to work at all other angles as well as right the teeth on the bevel gears can be straight spiral or hypoid locomotives marine applications automobile bending presses these are the some examples of the bevel gears you can see uh, the types of the teeth which are generally used in the bevel gear this you can see the animation how exactly the bevel gear works warm and warm gear the best example if you want to have a compact layout of the form um, compact transmission we use generally warm gear the main uh, uh, application is uh, interesting property that no other gear set has the warm can easily turn the gear but the gear cannot turn the warm this is the main uh, advantage of the warm gear and warm gears are used widely in the material handling and transportation machinery machine tools and automobiles so let us uh, talk about the nomenclature of the spur gear uh, this is very important to understand the different uh, nomenclature uh, so we'll discuss one by one here you can see uh, the two tits are uh, layout has been uh, shown here to discuss the different kind of nomenclature of spur gear let us you see the important part is this one we have a pitch circle here we have about the pitch circle the distance is known as the addendum the distance is known as the addendum and the working depth is this one and the hole depth is this one you can see uh, the face width is this one and the above surface is the top land we'll see one by one if you talk about the only one tooth you can see the different parts of uh, uh, the tooths are shown here above the pitch circle the distance is known as the dandum this particular face above the pitch circle is known as face and this is known as flank this is the bottom line or the space between one tooth and another uh, tooth this is the pitch circle right this is again shown the detail part what is the dendum circle what is the dendum circle we we'll discuss one by one pitch circle is what pitch circle it is an imaginary circle by which pure rolling action would give the same motion as an actual gear pitch circle diameter pitch circle diameter you can see uh, you have this one uh, it is the diameter of the pitch circle the size of the gear is usually specified by the pitch circle diameter so pitch circle diameter is very important pitch point is it is a common point of contact between the two pitch circles common point of contact then pressure angle or angle of obliquity this is also very important terminology it is the angle between the common normal to two gear teeth at the point of contact and the common tangent at the pitch point It is usually denoted by phi, and the standard pressure angles are 14 and half and 20 degree. Addendum, dedendum, right? So addendum is the radial distance which we have talked about. This is the radial distance you can see here, right? Uh, the radial distance of the tooth from the pitch circle to the top of the tooth. right and the distance from the pitch circle to the bottom of the tooth is known as dedendum circle and if you draw a circle from the center point from the center point so we have the pitch circle and the addendum and dedendum circle circular pitch it is a distance measured 
on the circumference on the circumference of the uh, uh, of the pitch circle from a point of one tooth to the corresponding point on the next tooth it is usually denoted by pc and we have pi d by t where d is the diameter of the pitch circle and t is the number of teeth on the wheel right and if we have a meshing of two teeth we generally achieve the ratio d1 by d2 is equal to t1 by t2 by the uh, circular pitch diametrical pitch uh, this is nothing but uh, we have a diametrical pitch if we t by d so we put the value here and uh, we get the pc is equal to pi d by t module module uh, is the ratio of the uh, this ratio of the cir pitch circle diameter in millimeters to the number of teeth it has usually denoted by m and m is given by d by t clearance you can see here the, uh, we have some clearance over here you can see so if another tooth comes here like this so whatever clearance is here we have uh, clearance so that interference can be eliminated top depth total depth total depth is from this bottom to the top of the tooth is known as the total depth face of the tooth we have talked about this is the face then flank then top land of the part then face width this is the face width hole and this is the profile right and the fillet radius here we give them radius so this is known as the fillet radius then path of contact uh, it is a path traced by the point of the contact of the two teeth from the beginning to the end of the engagement right length of the path of contact is what it is the length of the common normal you can see here right so this one common normal uh, it is the length of the common normal cut off by the addendum circle of the wheel and the pinion so this is all defined this arc of contact and if you start here if it is rotating like this so this uh, from pitch point to this one is an arc of approach and from this p to n is known as arc of recess right so this is all about the terminology very important part is the gear ratio you can see here this is the formula to find out the center to center distance between the two gears and the gear ratio is given by i i is equal to np by ng is equal to zz by zb this is very important formula if you find out if you want to find out the speed of a pinion either or the speed of the gear np or ng so thank you so much so this is all about the basics of the spur gear